Hello everyone, it's Class Dika and let's get in drag together. Today I am getting ready to DJ at a TikTok after party at VidCon. Very, very exciting. First, I'm just covering my brows with the good old Elmer's glue stick. A drag tried and true, or a drag stable, as I would say. And I'm using this like eyelash comb thing that is so dirty, I'm so sorry, um, to kind of comb it through and it's Honestly, the most helpful tool ever. Ooh, uncool. And I like to do it about kind of three or four times. The good thing about doing a DJ set is that everyone kind of sees you from far away. So I don't have to go too crazy on the mug because, you know, gluing eyebrows down is hard. I remember when I started drag, I would do like five to seven coats of this and then perform for like three minutes. <laughs> I know some queens use prosade as well, but that for me is just a little bit more hardcore. And I like that this is a little bit, I can just wash it off with water. I also glued on my hairline as well. And oh my gosh, you guys, I have to use this blow dryer now because I usually use Miss Dyson. And I went to Vietnam and then I plugged it into the wall and it was literally like firework went off in my hotel room. And I said, I'm about to burn this building down. I'm so excited for today's look. My first idea was Sailor Moon, but then I didn't want to go like too literal cosplay with it. So now I think I'm gonna wear this hair that I just curled yesterday. Let me show you. Like, she's all pinned up, but look at her from the front. <gasps> I'm very excited. Gluing down my hairline as well, so then the hair can sit very nicely on top. For foundation, I am using the Cryolon TV Pink Stick in NB1 and 8W. This is a lighter shade that I use to cover my eyebrows and just around the center. I like using it on here because that's where I need the most coverage. So I'll do it around the beard area. And then for the 8W, I like to do around the hairline, a little bit around the jaw, and around the forehead. And that's about it, I think. Oh, you know what? I actually used one more shade. It's in V20, and I use this to give a little bit of contour. To blend all that out, I like to use the House Lab Tricone Foundation. I like to use this because it makes me feel a little bit more woman when I do it. I like this because it's super light. Really, really good coverage as well. It just works over the stick foundation so well to where it kind of like fills in all the gaps, you know? And blending wise, I like to blend the middle of the face first and then go out into the outer area and then blend out the contouring after. So if anyone doesn't know, I am currently on the new season of AS9, which is All Stars. Oh my gosh, I don't know if y'all have been watching. Such a fun season, such a fun show. Everyone on there is so, so good. Thank you so much for all the love. It's so much fun to see how Everyone has transformed since their season. There's so many things to plan ahead. There's Dracon that's coming up, and I'm so excited to see everyone there because I haven't done Dracon in forever, I don't think. And I'm so excited for y'all to see what we have going ahead. Concealers, Anastasia Beverly Hills, number one. Oh, I actually fell in love with this concealer on set of filming all Stars because before I was using like the Kevin Aquan Sensual Skin Concealer but I just didn't like to dig my finger in there so much and to get the product out so I tried this and it was game over. I like to use one and four and I did one the shade number one under my eyes and then I go number four all around the highlighted part and I love this because it is so full coverage and it's so soft as well. The finish is really, really bomb. All Stars has been so fun because it led me to amazing opportunities. I just got to be on the cover of Lo Fischel for Pride, which is one of the most prestigious magazine in Vietnam, like in general. And you know, to have a drag queen be on the cover of it is kind of insane. Um, so that was really, really fun. And it's so amazing to see how People are receiving the Vietnamese doll. Get ready with me tutorial is so long overdue. I'm happy that All 
Stars is letting me get back into my groove and feel inspired again to do these things. And now I set everything with the Laura Mercier powder once again. And I go under the eye first, just so then there's no minimal creasing. And then I'm going with a bigger puff and then just beat the face just so that everything is locked and loaded and i use so much powder you guys like it is insane like i started using this like two weeks ago i think i went through a journey with my makeup to where um i used to put on so much makeup like i i would just spend like five hours on my face and then just putting on makeup the pandemic came and then I put on no makeup to where I thought I was a woman and now we're somewhere in between again. And Drag Race was literally so fun because it let me explore so many makeup styles and I got to, you know, to where every makeup look is catered to that specific couture piece or you know, I would get inspired by so many like Asian style makeup, like the yanked eyebrows or like, you know, colorful blush. And it is, it was so fun. Loved it. I used the whole thing, like it is crazy. And then I do a little extra powder right underneath the eyes because we're gonna go in with eyeshadows next. And I don't want the fallout to catch onto the skin. If you know what I mean. I really press that powder onto the eyebrows. Eyeshadows time! I think I'm gonna keep it pretty light today because we want to give woman today, not too much. Oh, my fantasy with eyeshadows has always been pretty backwards. I basically use just like browns, literally all shades of brown. This is a palette that I have depotted and it's been destroyed because I travel so much. Um, so now I only use it for my desk side but i think it used to be the natasha denona the supernatural palette or something like the medium brown i'll go in the crease and on the outer corner like so i'll just do it to where i get the color in and then i'll blend it out with a lighter brown after i used to cut my crease all the time and then i realized i actually have a crease naturally that just eliminate one step and we love an easier method to life just go in for the lighter brown and then i blend out the edges and then i like to go in with a darker brown and i do kind of like a v shape out here in the outer corner and then i take a little flat brush like this and i just kind of repeat whatever i did on the top to the bottom kind of redefine the lower lash line a little bit so we're going in with the medium brown again kind of all over and then taking a little pencil brush like this and i'm gonna go in to the lower lash line like so and blend her out then we're going in with the darker brown and then we're going just at the outer edges and then connecting it to the top eyeshadows to give us something like that. For sparkles, I like to use the Artist Couture pigment. I don't know, I discovered this in my PR kit once. She's just the most beautiful transitional pigment ever because I like to go in with more sparkles on top. Afterwards, I like to go in with a eyeliner. I think the trick for eyeliner is to use a brown eyeliner and then you can darken it with black afterwards because black is so hard to get it correct, you know? And Because you have one chance, you can't really mess it up. And I like to go in pretty thin at the inner part and then drag it out to make it thicker on the outer part. But I don't draw a wing. I just stop at the outer edge of the eye. And I think that's the trick to not messing up your eyeliner. And then make it thicker on the outer corner. Then I take a small little brush that I used to do the dark brown. And I kind of connect the eyeliner to the dark brown shadow like so. By just basically 
tapping it to blend it in. I want it like very, very smoky. And you don't know where the eyeliner starts or ends. And then going in with this little brush from Makeup Forever. It's like a little V shape, but it's not super like crisp. I dip it into some black eyeshadow and that's how I get a very nice and defined eye without having to do crazy liner or it's a very like foolproof way of lifting the eye without any effort. So that's the tip. Eyeliner time. This is my favorite eyeliner from MAC. It's called Costa Riche. This is that perfect brown eyeliner that's not too warm. It's just such a fish eyeliner. So, you know, warms up your eye if you have brown eye, if you have green eyes. It brings out the yellows. If you have blue eyes, it just makes it pop. It's just the perfect brown eyeliner. But do not sell it out, please. I actually have like backups of this in my kit in case I lose it or something. I love, love, love. I love using this Makeup Forever Starlet Powder. It is this white color, 2F01. I think it's 01. But it's like this stark, super sparkly pigment that is just crazy just put this in my inner corner and she just kind of brightens everything whenever i used to like do makeup for brides and stuff i would always highlight the inner corner of the eye because it would make the biggest difference and it would just open up their eyes and make their face look so much brighter and so much more alive and, and this powder is just amazing i need to go buy backups of this as well because it's always sold out everywhere. Next up is eyebrows, and I like to use um, nothing better than the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Book. I like to use the lighter shade and a flat eyeshadow brush like so. Drawing on eyebrows as a drag queen is very interesting, and my method for, you know, getting the best eyebrows would just to kind of just dab it and then just go for it. You can always correct with concealer after. Honestly, what were we doing before the Anastasia brow kit or brow products? I remember it was what, 2015 or something when they really took off and just so, so good. Anastasia is just the best. And for the inner part uh, of the eyebrows, I like to dip it into kind of a brighter shade, like so, and then just fade it. Girl, fade it tried to get me. Yeah, not maybe not that bright. <laughs> and this is just the first layer, so make sure the shape is how you want it, and then we can correct with concealer after. Ta-da! Going back with NB1 for the Cryolon TV Paint Stick, and I'm gonna use that to carve out the shape that I want and make them a little bit more even. Thanks to that powder we put underneath the eyes, now we don't have any fallout. I had depotted Studio Fix Powder Foundation from MAC and it's like the most convenient thing ever. And I like to use the shade, I believe this NC35. Um, and I just put that on the outer corner of the face just to blend everything in together and give it a soft contour. And it has some coverage in it too, so it's gonna really reinforce the base we have underneath. And then, I like to use, and I believe this is NC10, NC15. And I like to re-highlight the area where we put the concealer. Kinda like right here, where we get dark, and then right above the lip, chin, and under here. And I like to take it right here as well and then blend this area a little bit because I find that this really feminizes the face where you have this inner bone. I have a very protruding kind of forehead and the more flat this area looks, the more feminine the face looks. So for my face, that's just what works. <laughs> I also like to go in, this is probably my favorite trick, is a white powder foundation. This is from One Size. It is called Stage White. Um, Mac used to make another powder called Shivering White, and but they stopped using it. So thank God for Miss One Size. Patrick, you ate that up. And I like to use a little fat, not fat, flat brush. 
and go right in the tear duct area and you're gonna see the difference that really makes to the entire face like this is my favorite trick because it just kind of lifts the under eye and gives it that very doll fantasy I'm gonna do it over here as well because I have very it's just high I have higher cheekbones so this area tends to look a little bit more sunken in but with this we can counteract the shadow and kind of just brighten everything back up <laughs> I like to use it underneath the eyes but then I'll also use it at the center of the nose just to highlight I don't like contouring my nose so much because I find that sometimes can look very harsh so instead I just highlight it and kind of redefine what she was if I really want to contour my nose I'll go back in with the Max Studio Fix and I'll just go under just on the sides and then re-highlight the tip and re-highlight the center of the nose that will probably do it <laughs> so for contouring I like to use the airbrush bronzer from Charlotte Tilbury and I like to go in with a little stipple, a little angle brush like so and kind of just go in right here I'm not a huge fan of going past this point because I just like the shadow to be right there and then I kind of drag it down to the side of the face a little bit to make it a very heart face fantasy a little bit on the forehead as well and connect it to the eyeshadows just so that everything kind of flows and diffuse out together now it's time for blush I like to start out with the this is the Dior baby pink blush I believe that I depotted it's a very light color blush that I like to use for like a transitional blush shade sometimes it doesn't like to come off on my brush I like to focus it around the cheeks area I think that blush blindness is a thing though so this is why I like to go in with just these shades first so then make sure that I don't go overboard but if you do go overboard it's okay makeup is makeup oh Shannon hello nose yeah just for fun oh my god hmm and then with a bigger brush I like to go into Miss Patrick Ta she's a doll because she's so so pink and I like to smile and then just dab whenever the apples of the cheeks are same thing on the other side ding 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 and that should be enough ding 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 so cute to finish off this Neapolitan ice cream I like to go in with the House Lab Rose Quartz probably my favorite highlighter ever it is so so pink and it just gives like that perfect sheen that perfect topper to finish off the cheeks mm. and I like that it doesn't emphasize any texture and it just gives the skin such a lit from within glow and it's not powdery either Ugh, I just love this highlighter so much Mwah. it is at this point that I love to go back in with the makeup forever and re-emphasize this inner corner look at the difference Ugh, so good beautiful for lips I like to use these are the Charlotte Tilbury lip liners I think this one is Foxy Brown and I think that this is some other name but I've used them to the nub so it's another lighter brown but this one is Foxy Brown I know that for sure and I like to go in with the lighter one first sharpen her a little bit I like to make my top lip kind of like the same size as my bottom lip but only overlining in the middle so then it kind of gives you that like you know Brax doll type of lip shape and it's super super cute so overlining in the middle first and then connecting it to the outer corners like so I look like I have a mustache <laughs> and then the bottom kind of like the same thing but the bottom one you can go a little wider here at the bottom 
And then I go in with a darker shade and I kind of just define the or darken the corners of the lip just to contour and make it look a little bit more realistic and then a little bit on top and then a little bit here Ta -da! and then this has been my favorite lipstick recently it is the hourglass i believe um the lip gloss lipstick hybrid whatever but it's in the it's in the uh, it's in the shade sense 110 it exploded but it is a two-in-one lipstick and it is super super hydrating and i love any kind of moisture for my lips and it's that perfectly nudie color that's not too cool it's not too warm she is that girl love 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 all right and that is it for the face let me put on my lashes and my contacts and i'll be right back Ta-da! Get into her. Now it's time to finally put the hair on. Wiggy, like so. So to put my wig on, I like to use some tucking tape like so. This is going to go right here. And then I'm gonna do a piece on this side. And another piece on this side. And the key is extension tape. So I got this big piece of extension tape right here. And I'm gonna cut a piece to go on the side right here. And another piece to go on this side. And this will anchor our wig so she will not slip and slide. And then one big piece in the middle, like so. And here she is in all her glory. She's kind of held up in pin curls right now, so I'm gonna take her out one by one. Yes, I just curled, set, and put more bundles in her yesterday. For those who don't know, I used to be a hairstylist back in the day, so I would color and cut and do my own wigs, but nowadays, luckily, I have. I'm a little tied up <laughs> with gigs, so I usually have someone else do it for me. But once in a while, it's just so much fun to kind of get back into it and be able to do your own hair. But when I'm on tour, of course, I would have, I would curl my wigs myself and do all that. Oh, I'm gagging. And then we're gonna take the tape on the side. And Finding evil by moonlight. Oh, I can't sing that song, that's copyrighted. Bitch, you guys. I am kinda, I kinda turned it. Like, I kinda ate that up, not gonna lie. Mama, mama, it's a wrap. And, ugh, I'm just obsessed with such a vibe. The more the curls falls, it'll look even more I can look at this all day. But I think they're gonna pick me up in like 10 minutes. So I'm gonna pack and then I'm gonna bring you with me to the event. Um, we have sound check. Sound check at six, and then my set is going on at eight. And my set is around two hours, so I'm gonna bring you along. Let's go.